we're going to look <coughs> at finding the nth roots of a number and these are going to be the real roots so let's look at some examples let's start if the directions say uh, find the indicated real nth roots of A. So those would be the directions. So here's example one. So let's say N equals 3 and A equals negative 125. Notice this is odd and this is negative. That means our answer will be negative and there will just be one of them. So if this number is odd, you will just have one answer. So one, three, well, not one, well, I guess you could have one. Three, five, seven, nine. If it's odd and this number is positive, you'll have one positive answer. If it's odd and this number is negative, you'll have one negative answer. So we are looking for the third root of negative 125. So we're looking for some number that if you multiply it times itself three times, so you multiply the number times itself three times, you get negative 125. Now you need to be really careful. We're saying we multiply the number times itself three times. We are not multiplying it times three. And the answer is negative five. Because if you multiply negative five times itself three times, uh, then you get negative 125 because negative 5 times negative 5 is positive 25. Positive 25 times negative 5 is negative 125. You can also find roots on a calculator. So if I am looking for the third root of negative 125, I press 3 for the third root, and then math, and then number 5 for the xth root, number 5, of negative 125. Oh, I must have done that wrong. Let's see, what did I do wrong? Oh, there's no parentheses there. Okay, and then you get negative 5. Um, so if I wanted to take the fourth root of 64, for instance, fourth root, math, number 5, uh, 64, and I get some number that's um, not an integer. Okay, so going back, let's look at another example. Okay, same instructions, find the indicated nth root of a. This time we're going to say n equals 4 and a equals 16. Now it's different now. This number is even. When this number is even, you're going to have two answers. Now, if this number is even, this number has to be positive if we're looking for real roots. If this number was negative, we'd have imaginary roots. And for this lesson, we're just going to be looking at real roots. So n equals 4, a equals 16. So this means we're looking for the fourth root of 16. We're looking for some number that if we multiply it times itself four times, we get 16. And our answer is going to be 2. 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16. So that's one answer. Another answer is negative 2. Negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4, times negative 2 is negative 8, times negative 2 is positive 16. So our answer will be plus or minus 2. And it's going to work that way whenever you're taking an even root of something, you'll have plus or minus the answer. So an easy one, let's say I had n equals 2 and a equals 64. I'm looking for the square root of 64. Now, if I don't put any number here, that's saying it's the square root. So no number here means square root. The square root of 64 is the number that if you multiply it times itself, you get 64. That would be 8. But because this is an even root, it'll be plus or minus 8. Okay, let's look at a different type of problem. Um, let's say that 
uh, we are looking for rational exponents. So this time I'm going to have some number and let's say it's a to the 1 over n. That means the nth root of a. So for example, if I have 81 to the 1 half, um, 81 to the 1 half is going to be 9 because 9 times 9 is 81. Notice in this case, I'm not saying find the, all the uh, second roots of 81. When I write it like this, I'm looking for the positive root. Uh, if I were looking for, let's say, um, 125 to the 1 third, that means take the third root of 125, and we just did that a second ago, that was 5. Um, if I say take the fourth root of 81, Another way to write that is 81 to the 1 fourth. So these two things mean the same. So the fourth root is the same as an exponent, 1 over 4. And so I'm looking for a number that if I multiply it times itself four times, I get 81. And the answer is 3, because 3 times 3 is 9, times 3 is 27, times 3 is 81. Uh, so that doesn't actually equal that. That just helps us see that the fourth root is 81. Okay, so those were looking at roots um, or rational exponents where the numerator was 1. But you can also have rational exponents where the numerator is not 1. So if I have a to the n over m, what that means is I take the mth root of a and then I raise it to the n power. Okay, so let's take a look at an example of that. Let's say I had 25 to the 3 halves. That means take the square root of 25. Now I don't usually put a 2 here. I could if I wanted to. But that's the second root of 25. And I'm going to raise that to the third power. So first I figure out what the square root of 25 is. The square root of 25 is 5. Then I raise that to the third power. And I get 125. Let's look at another one. Let's say I have 9 to the 3 halves. Okay, that means take the square root of 9 and then raise it to the third power. So that gives me 3 to the third, which is 27. Okay, let's do another one, and this one involving a negative exponent. So this time it's going to be a negative exponent. And our, I'm going to take 32 to the negative 2 fifths. So 32 to the negative 2 fifths. The key thing to remember here, well, lots of things to remember, but one of them is a negative exponent does not make your answer negative. The negative exponent doesn't have anything to do whatsoever with the sign of this or the sign of the answer. What it means, 32 to the negative 2 fifths, means 1 over 32 to the 2 fifths. And you should make that your first step. Get rid of the negative exponent, and you get rid of the negative exponent by making it 1 over whatever it is. Okay, so now we know it's 1 over 32 to the 2 fifths. So that means 1 over the fifth root of 32 squared. Now the fifth root of 32 is 2, because 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is 32. But if you, you know, just are struggling with it and can't find it, you're looking for the fifth root of 32. Okay, it's 2. All right, so the fifth root of 32 is 2, so that's the inside part. And then I square it, and that gives me 1 fourth. Um, okay, so that's that. Uh, well, actually, let's do let's do one more with a negative exponent because a lot of people find that tricky. Um, let's say I have a negative twenty-seven. So here I actually have a negative number there to the uh, negative four thirds. Okay, so this negative has nothing to do with this negative. My first step will be to write this as 1 over negative 27 to the 4 thirds. First step, that's what you do with the negative exponent. 
Okay, so then I'm going to rewrite this as 1 over, now it'll be the third root, so the third root of negative 27 raised to the fourth power. Okay, now we need the third root of negative 27. Remember, when you take the odd root of a negative power, your answer is going to be negative. So what number times itself is negative 27? Negative 3. The odd root of a negative number is negative. So it'll be negative 3 raised to the fourth power. Now what's negative 3 to the fourth power? It's negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3. Now anytime you raise any number to an even power, positive or negative, your answer will be positive. So negative 3 to the fourth power will be positive, and 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 is 81. Um, okay, so that's our look at um, finding the um, nth roots of numbers and rational exponents.